What's up everyone, I'm Sublight Drive, and today I've got another model of my own design, which means that you can make it too. I'll have more details at the end of the video if you're interested. This is the KF-8G Kingfisher. The Kingfisher is my first shot at designing a one-man starfighter like this, and to get here I had to fill about 10 pages of my sketchbook with doodles before I found something I liked. For inspiration, I was looking at the classics like X-Wings or the Colonial Viper, but also real fighter jets like the F-18 or the F-15. My goal was to make something that felt like the protagonist ship, you know, something that felt like Katie Sackhoff could hop in and go shoot the bad guys. I didn't know exactly what I was aiming for, but I had a vibe in mind. Plus, I knew it needed to have that whoosh ability factor, like something you can hold in your hand and go whoosh. Eventually I settled on this guy right here. Once I had a general shape figured out, I freehanded a couple of rough prototypes in styrene, which gave me enough information to start putting together some templates in Affinity Designer. From there, I did some more testing in paper to make sure that everything fit together right, and test out different canopy and fin shapes. Once I was happy with everything, it was time to get to building. The tools I'm going to use are as follows. A pair of scissors. Masking tape. A drafting triangle. A hobby knife. Some extra blades to go with the knife. A pencil. Tweezers. A cheap little brush. Weld on three, a dropper and a dish for the weld on, super glue, and some sanding supplies. Also useful to have are a machinist scribe, a pin vise for drilling little holes, and some plastic nippers. The first thing I need to do is to cut out all the templates, making sure to leave just a little bit of space around each one. I'm starting with my thicker 1mm styrene. It's got a bit more structure to it, and most of the model will be built from it. I like to have a fresh blade before cutting, it just makes everything go a bit smoother. You don't need to press very hard at all here, or even cut all the way through the styrene. Just one or two passes to score it is more than enough. Also, don't forget to label the pieces. Once they've been scored, just bending along the creases is enough to snap the part clean out. Then, do the same for the rest of the parts. Score, label, and snap. Parts 3A and 3B have a curved section, so we can't rely on the straight edge for these. You'll just have to freehand it. Styrene is pretty forgiving though, so don't worry if the cuts aren't perfectly smooth. We can fix it later. That's all for the one millimeter parts, so next is the thinner half millimeter pieces. Half mil is much flexier and makes for good surface panels, but isn't as useful for structural parts. One last thing I like to have is some thin strips for detailing. You can actually buy these pre-cut, but I don't know why you would, it's just easy enough to make my own. And with that, I've got all the pieces cut, labeled, and we're ready to build.
I'm using Weld On 3 as my bonding agent, dispensing just a little bit at a time into the bottom of this soda can. For step one, I'm attaching parts 2A and 2B to part one. Placement doesn't need to be too precise, but you want them further back from where the nose starts to curve down. To help them stay up and at the right angle, I'm attaching a few triangular gussets that I've cut from one millimeter styrene. Were your 3A and 3B a bit misshapen? Well, now is when we have a good chance to fix them with a bit of sanding. Holding them together while doing so keeps things nice and symmetrical. Once I've made a big mess of styrene dust, I like to use duct tape, like a tack cloth, to wipe it all up. And now finally we can get to step two, putting 3A and 3B on the sides, making sure to line it up nice and neat with the ends of one. For step three, piece number four goes in at an angle near the front right here and then piece five supports the back half. Step four here is optional because it's really up to you where or whether you want to attach engines. I'm gonna skip piece number six because I like having space to attach the rockets right here. If either of those pieces don't fit cleanly, you can sand them just the teeniest bit to help them snug. For step six, piece number eight has some spring to it that will prevent it from attaching properly to the little curve here. To get around that, bending it before applying will help that springiness work for us, holding it down. Once it's in place, step eight is trimming off the excess. I recommend a fresh blade here since this can get a bit delicate. Before we continue, I'm gonna sand down the whole piece just to clean up the corners and edges. Now, normally applying the panels would come last, but for pieces 3 star A and B, the threes act as a guide for the wings you're gonna go. So I'm gonna detail them up and then put them on right now. The same goes for piece 8 star, since it'll help place the canopy. Once those are where they need to go, step 9 is attaching the wings. But just for good measure, I'm going to panelize them before they go on too. You might have noticed that I'm using super glue on these instead of weld on. 
While Weldon does a great job of bonding corners and edges, for big flat pieces, capillary action doesn't draw it more than a millimeter or two under the surface. What that means is that big panels can sometimes sort of puff up in the middle where it hasn't reached. So super gluing the centers helps them lay flat against the entire surface. The wings attach at a slight angle, which is easiest to get just by letting them droop to the same level as the table. Step 10 is assembling the canopy. You can do this in whatever order you like, but I find it easiest to start by dipping one of the 12s in Weld On and then sticking it to piece 10. Now, you can leave the canopy as is, but I want a bit more detail, so I'm going to use some of those strips I cut out earlier to add some structural beams along the edges. Then, step 11 is line it up with the panel from earlier and glue it down. Step 12 is attaching the fins, but first I want to round off the edges to make them look just a little bit more aerodynamic. Then, to help them sit at an angle, sanding down the base just a little bit. And of course, before they go on, some more panelizing. And with that, primary construction is done. We're not quite finished yet though. Panels and some strips fill in those blank flat areas to make them a little bit more interesting. And now on to kit bashing. My favorite booster rockets are pen caps, which I've got a whole collection of for just that. I like the look of these two, but they need a little bit of encouragement. After trimming, they fit quite nicely. Next, I want some veins to go in the front here. This probably would have been easier to do at an earlier stage, but it worked out just fine in the end. This section on the back is a perfect little greebly well, so I'll pull out my drawer of tiny bits.
Slicing the end of a styrene rod is a great way to get tiny little raised circles for some more detail. Speaking of tiny details, next is some tiny details. I had more footage of this, but my camera kept autofocusing on my hand instead of the bits, so this is what we get. And last, of course, we need some big old blasters. Styrene rods work well for this, or brass rods if you have them. I've got a few more detaily bits to add substance to the base where it attaches. Connecting them is nothing fancy, just a good blob of super glue. Now the only thing left to do is put together the stand, and assembly is complete. To begin painting, I'll first hit everything with a gray primer. Before I do anything else, I want to add some definition to the panels by darkening the spaces in between. Then a layer of gray on top sort of softens that out. I want to add more visual detail by having some panels be different shades of gray. This means masking off just about everything except for a few spots. This effect is subtle, but really helps the illusion of scale and that it's a real living object that's been repaired and refitted. Next is some color. I'm not following any specific plan here, just sort of following my instincts on where I think stripes would look good. And last, I want to paint the canopy black. This goes in two stages, first coloring it in, and then adding a gloss clear coat. Now I'm going to break out some decals. These are the same that I had custom printed for my previous video, and if you want more info about them, you can check it out there. They're pretty noticeably shinier than the rest of the model though, so a matte clear coat over everything is essential to unify the surface. From here, we can start weathering. I start by sponging on some chipping onto the painted surfaces. 
I did use a darker gray on the unpainted surfaces, but I did something wrong with my camera settings and basically got no footage of doing that. Adding a much darker center to the biggest chips creates a really effective illusion of depth to that damage. Next, I want to add some scorch marks, which is just some black paint carefully spritzed on with the airbrush in a few places. Pin washes come next. I use a heavily diluted oil paint for this, which is a little messy, but I think it cleans up pretty well. Finally, I add some streaking by dotting the ship all over and then wiping it down in one direction. And with that, we're done. If you think this is all super cool and you want to try building a Kingfisher, my Etsy is linked below where you can buy templates and instructions to do it all yourself. Besides liking and subscribing, it's the best way to support the channel. In fact, thanks to all of you who bought one already, I was able to get a new camera, which is amazing. And you may have already noticed since I'm still kind of figuring it out. Besides that though, it's honestly been an incredible experience to see my designs come to life on other people's workbenches, especially seeing everyone put their own little spins on me. So if you do buy and build a Kingfisher, I would love to see it, and you can share your creations with me on any of my social media, which I'll have in the description. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.